Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that YouTube dial in my direction and watching me do another pen review. I love the wide world of pens, and this pen you may recognize. I reviewed it in May of 2017, almost five years ago. So why is this pen now on a turntable? which I didn't have back in 2017. It's here because when I've asked viewers for what would be good subjects for our videos, they say talk about pens that you've had for a while and that you write with. And this pen has been in constant use since 2017 with the same ink, never cleaned, and it always writes first time every time. It has Noodler's Black Eel in it, and I keep it next to my notepad in the family room, which is where I spend a good deal of time in my recliner, watching TV, playing games on my Chromebook, and answering viewer comments. So, we're going to take a look at this pen. It's a Wingsung 698, if you haven't already figured that out. I have a couple other ones, and this pen... I would say was one of the first of the Chinese pens that ushered in a new era and a new generation and a new level of quality. Has some very nice features on it, which I don't think any pen has had all these features that this particular pen does have. So let's dive in and take a look at that. Mr. Sizemore is enjoying his view. Now he's having an overhead view. Yeah, his uh, anti-grav capabilities are quite lacking, but I'm certain at some point in time they might develop. So watch the pen rotate. Let's dive into the details. So in order to appreciate the pen, here's a clear version of it. I checked my notes. I actually had a clear one that had silver trim, so they did offer both gold tone trim and silver tone trim. But this one lets me show off all the little details that this pen has. You know, it's engraved with the maker and the model. The cap comes off in less than one turn, which is nice, especially for a pen of this almost vintage style. And it has a wing sung quality fine nib. And we can see those little feet there. This is what I call the pilot style nib that has those little wings on it which fit into cutouts in the feet. The nib stays in place and there's only one place to put it when you pull out the nib and feed. When I got these pens they came with a tube of silicone lubricant and an extra nib which was an extra fine Unfortunately, I can't find my extra fine nibs. I know they're somewhere, but right now, I don't know where that is. You know, a nice liner inside the cap. Like I said, the black one has never dried out on me ever. and Sometimes it could sit for a month or more. This has a locking mechanism on it. Again, another interesting feature. So you need to pull out the end of the barrel. You can see that little knob there which fits into a slot. And once you pull it out, then you can turn it counterclockwise to move the piston down. Then you turn it clockwise to bring the piston up. All these pistons run extremely smooth, very easy to work. There's that O-ring there that also helps seal up the cap. So it's a lot of features on it to keep it from drying out. I like the clear feed there. You know, too bad they didn't make a clear bit here with the converter. The other thing this pen was is it's a no tools to disassemble. This little metal ring at the top just turns, and hopefully my weak hands can get it to turn. Ah, we gotta go to a rubber gripper. To me, one of the aspects of age is I just don't have as much strength as my hands as I used to. And right away with the rubber gripper, it turns, and now this whole thing comes apart. Well, you got to make certain you're attached to the piston, and then this whole thing. Well, 
been a while since I took one of these apart. The piston doesn't come out this way. It comes out the other way. So that's one of the things you learn. And this little insert has that squared off ends which fit into a particular spot. Yes, I did use a silicone grease on this at one time. So let me go off camera and figure out the next steps. Well, to me, the next step is you unscrew the end here. And there's another O-ring. Again, they're very well designed. And that metal ring is loose, so you got to be careful about that. So now when we take this out, we push the piston out the front end. So that's how it all comes apart. And easy to clean. Again, no tools required. I always appreciate that from an engineering and design functionality viewpoint. And also, as I mentioned, the nib and feed pull out very easily too, so dog hairs. That's it. Hope you'd appreciated that. And I've done other videos on the teardown, so you can always look at those too. So one of the things that's nice about how this piston system is designed is you don't have to worry about lining anything up. You just assemble it, and you can always get certain to get a full movement of that piston. Pelican could learn something from this design. And you line that up, and it snaps in place. So kudos for Wingsung for five years ago designing and selling this pad. And it was also close to 20 US dollars when it first came out. So it was on the expensive side for a Chinese pen. So one of the other things that you learn about it, and here's another version of it in an opaque plastic with a very nice ink window. There are a number of different versions and permutations of this. Because it's opaque, you have a dark feed. But you'll notice it's not a wing sung nib. It's a pilot nib. And it, they fit well, so you can definitely change the writing experience by taking advantage of pilot nibs. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way of buying pilot nibs, so I would buy the least expensive pilot pen and take the nibs out and use them in my Wingsung 698s. The other thing that came about a little bit later, and here's what it looks like with the rhodium trim. And this is just a dark smoke plastic, so there's no ink window. But this has a medium Wingsung nib in it, which works quite well. And you need a feed that will feed it because this is a wet writer. But again, so you can go extra fine, fine, medium, and then if you want more than that, you can swap in a pilot nib. Ah, nice how that caps with a less than one turn. So as I mentioned, I don't have any Wingsung extra fine nibs to show you, but this is a comparable one. You can see those feet at the end, which designates it as a pilot style nib. So hopefully we can show you the difference of the tipping material. The extra fine is definitely extra fine. There's a number of people who like really extra fine nibs. So if you want to find a 698 with an extra fine nib, I'm certain it will give you a very fine line, at least equivalent to a Japanese fine, if not a little finer. And all these nibs I find uh, write very, very well. So this pen has been in use for almost five years. That lends itself to durability. No cracks. All the parts still work extremely well. The plating looks good. The only thing that I find aesthetically something that I never really got to get used to are these facets in the top of the cap finial. I understand why they did it. You know, it certainly lends a little bit of a different look to the pen to break up the very classic and basic designs, but... I could have done with just a flat one or a little cone one or whatever, but then I'm not a pen designer. Would I not use this pen because of that? <laughs> Absolutely not. So as we take off the cap, we'll see that it comes off with less than one turn, as we find out with all of these pens. 
will give you some dimensions on the pen. And I find it very comfortable in my hand unposted. But it does post. Not very deeply, and that cap does have some weight to it, so it does change the balance, but I could use this posted. But as we've discussed, generally I don't post my pens. I just put the cap aside while I write. And of course this doesn't roll away because it does have a clip. That section is also very nice. We'll give you those dimensions. The pen feels good in the hand. Now those threads and that step up, you can feel a little bit, but I would not hold the pen up that high. But if I did, I could still write with it comfortably and write for long sessions as needed. Let's see how that black Yale ink is put down by this fine Wing Sung super quality nib. Like I say, I can write with this pen all day. I enjoy the line. I know I'm not a fine, an extra fine lover, but I appreciate a good nib. And my use of this nib is perfect for everyday writing. Writing on any types of paper with this black gill ink, it just works extremely well. Minimal bleed through feathering and things like that. And even though this is a very fine nib, I don't find any problems with it picking up paper, which some nibs can do. I actually had nibs that pulled up paper on Tomo River, which is amazing. And with a little bit of pressure, the nib opens up a little bit. I mean, it's not a super stiff nib, but I do certainly wouldn't call it a soft or flexible nib, but it just writes well. And I appreciate the writing of the nib. Let's look at the medium nib. I enjoy this nib too. It certainly is a medium line, a lot wider than, than the fine nib puts down, about twice the width. It's also a little bit softer, and it is very smooth. As you can see with small writing, the bigger the nib, the more challenges it is to write small. It's easy to write small with a fine or extra fine nib, and sometimes I enjoy writing small. I have no idea what ink is in here. It looks like it's some type of dark green ink. I don't think that's important. I think these pens are very tolerant of a wide range of inks. Let's just rate this model of pen. And I'm going to give it a 9.8. Primarily, I give it two checks for being definitely a groundbreaking pen at the time it came out. Fit, finish, build quality, piston filler, nice nib, doesn't dry out, great writer, what more could you ask for? I also gave it two checks for the great variety that they came up with. You know, many different types of resins and colors were used and some with ink windows and different trims, so I just like the pen. Can't go wrong with it. It's still being sold, and let's take a look at some different variations on the pen that are currently available on various platforms. So we've reached the conclusion of this quick review of a pen that I've used for almost five years. Hopefully you found it interesting. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. I appreciate every viewer. Uh, 
leave me a comment. Do you have a 698? Do you like writing with it? How long have you had it? I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, putting some ink down, writing, doodling, correspondence, ledger, journal, whatever. If we've reached the end of this video, and as usual, there will be more to come. Bye. Yep. Got to keep the nib on the paper. Have a wonderful day.